His mercy endures forever. God is good, not just some of the time, but we know that God is good all the time. And we serve the great and awesome God. The great and awesome God that Nehemiah spoke about in Nehemiah chapter 1. The great and awesome God that will certainly give us great success. What a blessing it is to be with the people of God this morning. It's so great to see so many brothers and sisters in Christ here uh, make up the Dallin Road Church of Christ. And it's great to see so many of our other family members uh, who are here visiting and who have been working uh, this past weekend. We are so deeply thankful for, for all of the support and all the help from our brethren in Alabama. And let's be sure that we pray that they have a safe journey home. They're going to go home uh, right after services this morning. And those who may be visiting, we are thankful that you have come here and to come and see and we'd love to share with you the gospel of Jesus Christ. You let us know, and we'd love to share the word of God with you. Well, let's talk a little bit about earthquakes, fires, hurricanes, floods. What do all of these events mean? For some, it means that the end of the world is near. Have you heard that? That's what some have actually been saying as of late. In fact, according to some, the world was supposed to end yesterday. Many believe that Jesus was going to return yesterday. But what do you see? We are all still here. Now, the Bible is very clear that no one knows the day or the hour of the return of the Lord. I could give you numerous passages, but we're not going to do that. One passage in 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 10 reminds us that the Lord is going to come like a, like a thief in the night. And no one knows the day or the hour, and therefore people should stop guessing and throwing out different dates and things like that. But we have seen all of these earthquakes and floods and hurricanes and fires. What do these events mean? Well, I think we could say a couple of things. I think we can say that, that these events mean that we live in a world where natural disasters unfortunately occur. And we live in a world where time and chance happen to all. The Bible reminds us of that in Ecclesiastes chapter 9 and, and verse number 11. The truth of the matter is storms in this world have been taking place for a very long time and they will continue. But we don't know the day or the hour when Jesus will return. But I do think there is something important for all of us to think about, and, and maybe we could describe it in this way, that there is going to be another storm that's going to take place, or that there's going to be another event that is going to take place one day. Jim Cantori from the Weather Channel is not going to be able to predict when this event is going to happen. When this storm hits, at least for some, it's going to be described like a storm. There's not going to be any place to take cover. And the day I'm talking about, the event that I'm talking about, the storm, so to speak, that I'm talking about is Judgment Day. We know that the day of the Lord will come. The Bible teaches us that. We don't know the day or the hour, but we know that one day Jesus will return. In 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse number 10, the Bible says, But the day of the Lord will come like a thief in which the heavens will pass away with a roar and the elements will be destroyed with intense heat and the earth and its works will be burned up. This is going to be a storm, so to speak, that we are only going to experience one time. Everything will be destroyed, not merely furniture or walls. And one day all of us are going to stand before God. And we will either go to heaven or we will either go to hell. And there will be no physical rebuilding, only eternity. And for a few minutes this morning, I want to talk about the day, the day of the Lord. And we'll emphasize some ideas in verses 10 through 18. But I'm going to ask you to do something with me. I'm going to ask you to read 2 Peter chapter 3. I want to ask the guys upstairs to make sure my mic is on. Maybe that's not me, or maybe it is me. Second Peter chapter three. Uh, the and I want you to think about what Peter is going to say to the saints back in the first century. It has great application for us. There are some ideas. There are some thoughts that Peter is really going to drive home in this last chapter here. 
that we need to hold on to. And so let's look at 2 Peter chapter 3 and look at verse number 1. And I want to make three observations and then the lesson will be yours. Peter would say this, This is now, beloved, the second letter I am writing to you in which I am stirring up your sincere mind by way of reminder that you should remember the words spoken beforehand by the holy prophets and the commandment of the Lord and Savior spoken by your apostles. Know this, first of all, that in the last days, mockers will come with their mocking, following after their own lust, and saying, where is the promise of his coming? For ever since the fathers fell asleep, all continues just as it was from the beginning of creation. For when they maintain this, it escapes their notice that by the word of God, the heavens existed long ago, and the earth was formed out of water and by water, through which the world at that time was destroyed, being flooded with water. But by his word, the present heavens and earth are being reserved for fire, for the day of judgment and destruction of ungodly men. But do not let this one fact escape your notice, beloved, that with the Lord one day is like a thousand years and a thousand years like one day. The Lord is not slow about his promise, as some count slowness, but is patient toward you, not wishing for any to perish, but for all to come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief in which the heavens will pass away with a roar and the elements will be destroyed with intense heat and the earth and its works will be burned up. Since all these things are to be destroyed in this way, what sort of people ought you to be in holy conduct and godliness? Looking for and hastening the coming of the day of God because of which the heavens will be destroyed by burning and the elements will melt with intense heat. But according to his promise, we are looking for new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. Therefore, beloved, since you look for these things, be diligent to be found by him in peace, spotless and blameless. And regard the patience of our Lord as salvation, just as our beloved brother Paul, according to the wisdom given him, wrote to you. Verse 16, as also in all his letters speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to understand which the untaught and unstable distort, as they do also the rest of the scriptures to their own destruction. You, therefore, beloved, knowing this beforehand, be on your guard, so that you are not carried away by the error of unprincipled men and fall from your own steadfastness. And then finally, verse 18, but grow, grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be the glory both now and to the day of eternity Amen. Did you pick up on some ideas that were repeated throughout that chapter? Did you see what Peter was trying to drive home to the saints about the coming day of the Lord? He mentioned the coming day of the Lord a couple of times. And there's some ideas that I think are important for us to hold on to. We don't know when the day of the Lord is going to happen, but we do know about the day of the Lord. And there's some thoughts that I want you to take home. Number one is this. I noticed when I was reading this that Peter talked about the promise. That the day of the Lord is promised. Did you pick up on that? He mentioned this idea that one day Jesus is going to return. And it doesn't matter, as Peter would say, how much time passes. One day the Lord will return. This is a promise from God. Now the saints in the first century were being ridiculed because, because the return of Christ had not yet taken place. Everything was remaining as it had always been. But Peter wanted them to know it didn't matter what other people say. There's something important for us. It doesn't matter what people may think. God has promised that one day he is going to return, and therefore we can believe that. You see, when God makes a promise, it always comes to pass. And there were some who probably, you think about the days of Noah, as Peter talked about, would ridicule Noah and, and mocked him with all the things about this quote-unquote coming flood. And yet the promise that God said that would, the events that would happen, that's exactly what took place. It happened exactly as God said it would. In our Bible reading, reading from the book of Jeremiah, I'm about a month behind in a chronological Bible reading, but in Jeremiah, Jeremiah mocked, or the people mocked Jeremiah as he warned them about the captivity. But what happened? The word of God came to pass. When God makes a promise, that promise will always be fulfilled. And therefore, we've got to make sure that we are not deceived. Time is no element for God. 
Time is no factor with God fulfilling his promises. That's the idea that he's trying to get across in verse number 8. But, not, but do not let this one fact escape your notice, beloved, that with the Lord one day is like a thousand years and a thousand years like one day. Time is no factor with respect to God fulfilling the promises that he says that he is going to do. And so let's make sure that we don't become spiritually lazy and think, well, it's 2017 and everything remains exactly how it's always been. And the Lord has not yet returned. And so maybe he's just never going to come back. He has promised that one day he will return. And even though there are people out there throwing out different dates, September 23rd for some reason is a popular date, don't allow that to cause you to think, well, maybe he isn't going to come back. Peter, inspired by the Holy Spirit, makes it very clear that Jesus, that the Lord one day will return. And maybe sometimes we just forget about the idea that Peter was trying to get across, and that is that with God, God is patient. God is patient and that he is long-suffering. That's the second thought that stood out to me as I was reading this. And maybe you saw that too. He mentioned this idea of being patient, God being patient. In verse number 9, he said, The Lord is not slow about his promise, as some count slowness, but is patient toward you, not wishing for any to perish, but for all to come to repentance. He would mention that again in verse, six, or verse 15. He said, In regard to the patience of our Lord, as salvation. He reminded the saints that this promise is going to happen and remember the patience of God. What Peter is saying here is powerful and the fact that God is going to come back but he is patient. He, is, he doesn't want anyone to perish. He doesn't want anyone to, to be eternally separated for him, from him in eternity. The Lord is not slow about his promise as some count slowness but is patient toward you, not wishing for any to perish, but for all to come to repentance. God doesn't want anyone to perish with the coming storm that's going to take place. And yet, sadly, we know that there will be some, or that there will be many who will perish. And we really need to think, think about the idea of the patience of God. Every day we wake up, Every day we wake up is another day for us to redeem the time. What's our theme for 2017? Redeeming the time, making the most of our time from Ephesians chapter 5. And every day we are able to wake up and see a new day is a day for us to be, to get ourselves right with our Savior. To make sure that we are redeeming the time. To make sure that we are seeking first God and his righteousness, his kingdom. To be drawn closer to him and to be fully following him. God is waiting for men to turn to him. And that should have a great impact upon all of us. God is very patient with you and with me. And yet sometimes I don't think I fully appreciate and fully understand the patience of God. It's hard for us to be patient, isn't it? It's hard for us sometimes to be long-suffering, and I think maybe it's just challenging for us to, to fully comprehend God's patience toward men. I think about our relationships maybe with our children and how we can get upset when our children don't listen to us, and we can lose our control, and we can lose our temper, and yet don't we sometimes act the same way with respect to God? He is our Heavenly Father, and, and sometimes we can throw a fit, and sometimes we can get upset, and sometimes we just may not want to obey Him at all, and sometimes we just refuse to obey Him. And yet the Bible teaches us that He is patient toward everyone, not just us, but He is patient toward all men. The Lord is not slow about His promises, some count slowness, but is patient toward you, not wishing for any to perish but for all to come to repentance. God doesn't want anyone to be eternally separated from him. He is patient, and every day he's giving you and he's giving me an opportunity to do what? To repent, to change, to lay down the things that may be separating us from our relationship with him. He's patient, and he's patient with mankind. God is just, even though we are unjust. According to Matthew 5 and verse number 45, he makes the rain to fall on the just and the unjust. He's kind to the ungrateful, according to Jesus in Luke chapter 6 and verse number 35. And yet, despite God's patience, there will be some who will still be lost. Because they didn't redeem the time. Because they didn't take advantage of his long suffering and his mercy and his grace and his forgiveness 
Every day he's given us time so that we can be ready for this coming storm. It's going to be a storm for many who are not prepared. It's going to be a great day for those who are prepared, but it's going to be a horrible day. A horrible event for those who are not prepared. And sadly, just like so many, many will refuse to heed the warnings given by the Holy Spirit. Given by the words of the apostles about the coming event that will destroy everything. That's Peter's argument in verse number 10. He said, the day of the Lord will come like a thief in which the heavens will pass away with a roar and the elements will be destroyed with intense heat and the earth and its works will be burned up. It's going to be unimaginable. It's going to be an amazing event. It will be the day of the Lord. God is patient with all of us right here, right now. And what he wants all of us to do right here, right now, is to repent. And he wants us to make sure that we are prepared. Did you see that idea in 2 Peter chapter 3? I didn't see the actual word prepared, but that's the idea that Peter is really trying to drive home to the saints. When you look again in verse number 11, listen to the language here. Since all these things are to be destroyed in this way, what sort of people ought you to be in holy conduct and godliness? In other words, you guys know the event that's going to, that's going to happen. You know that this day is eventually going to take place. And so as a result of this, now is the time to be prepared. You ought to be how you ought to be living in holy conduct and godliness, looking for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be destroyed by burning and the elements will melt with intense heat. Verse 14, therefore, beloved, since you look for these things, be diligent to be found by him in peace, spotless and blameless. In other words, don't be surprised about this event. Because it is going to happen. Now, again, we don't know the day or the hour, but what Peter's trying to drive home is, as a people of God, we must be prepared. And a simple question that I want to give to all of us this morning is, are you prepared? Are we prepared? We don't have to look at any other forecast. We know because the Holy Spirit has told us this is going to take place one day. Therefore, we have to be prepared. Brothers and sisters, friends, those who may be visiting, are you prepared to die? Are we prepared to stand before the King of Kings? Stand before God on the day of judgment. We've talked about so much insurance and things like that. But do we have the eternal insurance that we truly need that's only found in one person? Jesus Christ. He is the way. He is the truth. And he is the life. As a people of God, my friends, my brethren, we must be prepared. This day is coming. And it really is a day that we should be thinking about all the time. It's a day that we should always be concerned about. It's a day that we need to be prepared for. Is today the day the Lord returns? I got no clue, and neither do you. And neither does anyone else. But it could be. If he returned today, would you be ready? If he returns tomorrow, will we be ready? We are to live lives of holiness. We are to be diligent with our faith and focus on our God. Now, we know all of that, don't we? We know that. So the bigger question is, are we doing it? That's the challenge. Are we doing the things that we need to do to make sure that we are fully prepared? Hurricane Harvey is a reminder that we need to be prepared. We're in the process of remediating our homes, but are we remediating our hearts? Are we fixing the things in our hearts that need to be fixed? Sadly, we have to throw out possessions so that we'll not get sick physically, but but are we throwing out the problems in our hearts that are poisoning us and making us sick spiritually? We are begging and, and so thankful that we have help from brethren to help clean out the debris in our homes. But brothers and sisters, are we crying out to our brothers and sisters in Christ, begging them to help us spiritually? The Bible reminds us that we ought to be confessing our sins to one another. Are we allowing others to see maybe the damage, not in our homes, but rather in our hearts and receiving the assistance that we need from them so that we can be prepared for this coming event? And most importantly, are we allowing the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit to remediate our hearts? Are we prepared for the day when everything, everything will be destroyed? 
Earthquakes and floods and hurricanes and fires will sadly continue. But brothers and sisters, let us never be deceived about the coming day of the Lord. It will happen. It's a promise. And God has given us the time right here, right now, to make sure that we are ready. So let's make sure that we are not deceived. The day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. And Peter would end in verse 17. He said, you therefore, beloved, knowing this beforehand, be on your guard so that you're not carried away by the error of unprincipled men and fall from your own steadfastness, but grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be the glory both now and to the day of eternity. Let's make sure that we are on guard. Let's make sure that we are prepared so that we do not fall from our own steadfastness. And let's make sure that we continue to grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Are you prepared right here, right now? If you can't answer that question, then you're probably not prepared. Are you in Jesus Christ where salvation is found? We want to help you to make sure that you can answer yes to that question. Let's make sure that we are always prepared. And if you are not prepared, we'd love to share with you the gospel of Jesus Christ and what you must do to be saved. If you're subject to the invitation, come now as we stand and as we sing.